there are consequences to those actions today, my friends, and it's destroying our lives. What we need to do is realize this, that bad things often result because of bad decisions that we're making. God says you need to deal with this circumstance, not fall asleep and hide behind it, but realize that you're responsible for your actions. People begin to miss church and wonder why their families go astray. I'm telling you today, my friends, that little sins lead to big sins. People today say, well, you know, it's not that important. I'll just wait till later on to accept Christ as my Savior. My friends, listen, you put that off and it's going to lead to a great disaster. Number two today, not only do we see bad things happen to teach us that certain actions lead to painful consequences, but number two today, they happen to display the work of God in our lives. The work of God. There's a quote in your bulletin today that talks about how a saint deals with adversity and suffering and that is one of the greatest testimonies to a lost man. I read the story today about a, a, a young preacher that came in uh, with Dr. Barnhouse. He's one of the old time religious speakers and, and in, he was at his church and preaching. The doctor, I'm sorry, the young preacher came in and saw Brother Barnhouse and said, look, my wife is, is having a child this week while we're having these meetings and if I'm missing one night you'll know that I'm at the hospital with her on a Friday night she had the child and the pastor came by the hotel where Dr. Barnhouse was at and it was late and he knocked on the door and, and he had no color to him and, and he just all the color drained out of his face and he looked at Dr. Barnhouse and he said I can't believe it he said we have a child that is born with a handicap Dr. Barnhouse looked at him and he said he said, how do you know that this is not for the glory of God in the end? So the young preacher turned around and went back and spent time with his wife at the hospital. There was a lady that was a switchboard operator at the hospital, and she despised Christians. She, she just was always looking for something to go wrong in a Christian's life so she could just make it another mark not to ever go to church. How many of you know somebody like that? I mean, they're just looking for something. They say, well, that's just another reason to check God off my list. I want you to know something. That's not a good excuse when they stand before God. But this lady was a switchboard operator. And was that young pastor went back in there and met his wife. And his wife said, they won't let me see our, our baby. What's going on? And finally he broke the news to her. And she began to sob. And, and he said, honey, he said, listen, he said, I believe that this is for the glory of God. And as they begin to pray, she says, so do I. The next morning, she picks up the phone and she's calling some of the church members and telling them what's going on. And that switchboard operator that hated Christians was listening in. And she was hearing the powerful testimony of, of this new young mother talking about, yes, my child is born with a handicap, but we believe it's for the glory of God. And something great is going to happen out of this. On that Saturday, Dr. Barnhouse had left the church and gone on to another meeting. And that Sunday, that young pastor stood up in the pulpit and began to preach. And, and as he did, he looked back there and in the auditorium interspersed around were 30 doctors and nurses from that hospital. And that switchboard operator was there. Because she began to tell the whole church, you're not going to believe how this family is reacting to this. And that morning as that young preacher preached with a broken heart but still looking for the glory of God, he gave a, a simple message and he gave an invitation. And out of those 30, 17 of those people walked the aisle and accepted Christ as their Savior. How many of you believe with me today that God can take the worst situation and make something good out of it? Sometimes God allows bad things to happen in our lives to show His work or His glory. Paul said this. He said, you know what? He said, there are some things that are going on in my life and I've asked God to, to change them, but He didn't. I remember the story about a man by the name of Lazarus. He was dead. That's as bad as, about as bad as it gets. And the sister said, Lord, if you would have cared, you would have been here. He said, you know what? You guys don't understand. This sickness is for the glory of God. You know what he told them? He said, roll the stone away. And as they rolled the stone away, probably all the while thinking, what in the world is going on here? And all of a sudden, Jesus stepped in front of that holding that rock. Lazarus! Lazarus! Come forth. By the way, you know why he called his name? Because if he wouldn't have called his name, all the dead would have walked out. 
he had that much power, amen? And he called him and Lazarus came out still in, in his grave clothes and Jesus said, loose him and set him free. Oh, it looked like a bad situation, but Jesus said this is for the glory of God. Number three today, bad things happen to prove the authenticity of our faith. You know what it's going to prove? If our faith is really real or not. You've heard this before. Well, he talks a good game. But we were joking yesterday on the men's retreat down at the shooting range. By the way, that's a good men's retreat when they got a shooting range and shoot guns. And, oh, man. Zach came in number two, by the way. Zach was talking to me and another guy, and they were talking about their different shooting abilities. And I told the one man, I said, isn't it amazing? The older we get, the better we were. Hey, you know what happens sometimes in our lives? That God says, you know what? You've been going along in faith for a while and I'm just going to prove that it's real here. Not only for your sake, but because somebody else needs to see it. Peter said this, he said, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, he said, you're, you're in heaviness because of manifold or many temptations. He says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, Though it be tried with fire, that it may be found unto the praise and honor and the glory of Jesus Christ. And he goes on and he says these words. He says, I want you to understand that you are receiving the end of your faith one day. You're not at the end. How many of you ever felt like you were at the end of your rope? What do they say? The world says, well, just tie a knot and hang on. You know what Jesus says? Let go and let me catch you. I can do... All things through Christ which strengthens me. The testing of faith may be just to determine the truth about our lack of faith. So we're going through tough economic times right now. And our government is doing so much to help us out. But people that have placed their hope in the stock market and finances and all of that, it's been taken away. You know what God's saying? Just let go and let me take care of it. I'm not saying you ought not a plan for your future. All of us would be a fool if we didn't do that. But the biggest thing we can plan for in our future is to make sure God is always there. Why do bad things happen? Why is life so unfair, preacher? Number four today, I believe it's to point us to eternal truths that are relevant to everyone. A time of suffering and adversity is a time where people will take time to ponder eternity. Maybe at a loved one's death or a funeral, people come face to face with it and they begin to think, you know, there's something more to life than just this. I believe that God ordained some pauses in our life. Pauses. There are several things that He tells us in the Bible. He says this over in Proverbs, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. There's a parable about a rich man that said, Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm so rich and I'm so wealthy that I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build bigger ones so that I can put all my stuff in it. And the Bible says, Thou fool, thy soul is required of thee today. James says this over in James chapter 4. He says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time then vanisheth away. I believe that bad things happen so that God brings us into face-to-face -face with an eternal view. 